Verify team reached out to Nelson's management and they confirmed Willie Nelson is alive and kicking. In fact, the 84 year old has been the victim of so many death hoaxes over the years and inspired him to write a song. A surprise performance by the Texas legend Willie Nelson. I saw this and I was like, whoa, to witness this. He appeared on stage with headliner Chris Stapleton last night. Imagine them together. Not just a music legend, but a man who has more secrets than you know. Chris Christofferson, who completed the American country music with his soulful lyrics, just left the world recently. Willie Nelson opened up about his late friend, Chris Christofferson, who passed away at 88, shedding light on the hidden depths of the legendary country musician's life. What secrets did Christofferson carry, masked behind his charming persona and heartfelt lyrics? Did his struggles shape the poignant stories in his songs? As fans mourn the loss of this iconic figure, Nelson's revelations hint at the hidden corners of Christofferson's surroundings. The legacy of Chris Christofferson holds more than just music. What revelations did Nelson Christofferson's longtime friend make? Who was Willie Nelson? Willie Nelson is not a strange name to the world. This American music lad hit the music industry with his iconic voice. But unfortunately, when he was born to Doyle Nelson and Merle Marie on April 29, 1933, his childhood was marked by loss. His mother passed away right after his birth, and his father left to marry another woman. He faced the loss of parents, so this upheaval led Willie and his sister to live with their grandparents, who became his guiding light. It was there surrounded by love and support, that he discovered his passion for music. At the age of seven, his grandparents gifted him a guitar, igniting a lifelong love affair with melodies and storytelling. Their encouragement nurtured his talent. He, along with the support of his grandfather, gave his first performance at the local church. His grandfather taught him some basics, which helped him begin his journey. Performing at the church kicked him into the beginning of his career at the age of just seven. He even wrote his first song at that time. By age nine, Willie Nelson was already playing guitar with the Polka Bohemian Band. Life was tough. His grandparents picked cotton to make ends meet, hustling every day. In the busy lifestyle of the Western world, a boy who was born into a broken family had something unusual in him. In the midst of this bustling struggle, Willie felt a fire in his heart. He wanted to turn his love for music into a career. Instead of just dreaming, he started playing at small clubs and local events, earning a few bucks here and there. Willie was different from other teens as he grew up. While they played for fun, he was driven by a passion to succeed. During high school, his guitar became his voice, speaking the stories of his life. With each strum, he wove hope and dreams into the fabric of his music. His journey wasn't easy, but the love for his craft pushed him forward, paving the way for the legend he would become. When he was still in high school, his sister's husband created a band and named it Texans. Willie joined them as their guitarist, their lively sound mixed country, folk and blues, capturing the hearts of many. The Texans gained popularity at local dances and community events, showcasing their talent. Soon, they became the talk of town because of their unique honky tonk sounds. As the Texas band thrived, Willie saw the power of music to connect people and tell stories. Their upbeat, heartfelt tunes showed him the path to a career he longed for. He took music seriously, encouraging himself to follow his dreams and become the unforgettable musician we know today. Willie's music journey. The first step of his thousand mile struggling journey was Kavan in Washington, where he appeared multiple times on screen in 1956. He made his first record, No Place For Me, however it didn't go like he thought. But the one thing he followed strictly throughout his career is never giving up. Willie Nelson never gave up on his music career. Despite countless setbacks, he kept grinding, pouring his heart into recording No Place For Me, which ultimately didn't succeed. Into the newsroom, Willie Nelson won't be part of tonight's Outlaw Musical Festival tour. Bob Dylan, Robert Plant, Alison Krauss are all still on. Nelson will be replaced by his son, Lucas. To make ends meet, he took a job as a radio announcer, but that wasn't fulfilling. Hoping for better luck, Willie moved to Colorado, landing a position at a nightclub. He dreamed of securing a spot on the Ozark Jubilee, but once again, he faced disappointment. Frustrated, he decided to quit music altogether. He became a dishwasher, feeling lost and defeated. Back in Texas, he even sold Bibles to survive. But each night, he cried for the music he loved, feeling it tug at his heart. This struggle ignited a fire within him. In 1958, 
they reshifted to Houston, where his wife gave birth to his son, Billy. At that point, lead singer of house band Larry Butler gave him a $50 loan to rent an apartment and a six-night gig performance in the club, instead of playing $10 for the song Mr. Record Man. Man with the blues, the storm has just begun. And what a way to live, misery mansion. His recorded songs just ignited back the fire of music in his heart. Soon, Paul Buskirk, a guitar instructor, hired him as a guitar teacher in his school. Willie Nelson never stopped grinding on his music journey. He set his sights on Nashville, the heart of country music. But for a while, no one recognized his talent. Everything changed when Hank Cochran, a songwriter for Pamper Records, signed Willie. He promised a well-deserved $50 raise, which fueled Willie's determination. Soon after, Farron Young heard Willie performing at Tootsie's and recorded Hello Walls, bringing more attention to his work. This was a turning point for Willie. He became a member of Ray Price's touring band, gaining invaluable experience on the road. During this time, Willie wrote and performed some of his early hits, including Crazy and Nightlife. His unique style and heartfelt lyrics began to capture the hearts of many, setting the stage for his incredible career ahead. In 1961, Willie Nelson joined Liberty Records, marking a pivotal moment in his career. He recorded multiple hits, and his music began to catch the attention of fans everywhere. Willie also ventured into acting, landing his first movie role in The Electric Horseman. His early songs, like Funny How Time Slips Away, started to rise in the charts, but success didn't come all at once. While he gained recognition, it still wasn't enough. After facing challenges with RCA Records, Willie made the tough decision to end his contract. This choice was a turning point, allowing him to reclaim his artistic freedom. Despite the setbacks, Willie's passion for music never faded. Each struggle pushed him to dig deeper into his craft, leading to the iconic sound he is known for today. His resilience shines through his songs, resonating with fans who connect to his journey. So what inspired Willie to push forward and continue making music, even when he considered retirement? What kept his spirit alive in the face of challenges? Shotgun Willie. After retiring from music, Willie Nelson took time to think about his future. He moved to Austin, Texas a city buzzing with vibrant hippie culture and new sounds. Inspired by the music around him, Willie began experimenting, blending jazz, hip-hop, and country ballads into a unique style. These must be here all the time, Willie, I would guess. What is this, a marijuana thing? Uh, yeah, you know what that is? <laughs> I've seen these around. <laughs> However, his innovative approach wasn't immediately embraced. When he released his new music, he faced skepticism and challenges from fans and critics alike. But Willie persevered, and soon, people started to recognize his talent. To boost his career, Willie hired Neil Reshin as his manager. This was a game changer. Neil helped negotiate the termination of Willie's old contract with RCA, securing him a hefty annual salary of $25,000. With fresh energy and direction, Willie was ready to reclaim his place in the music world. He released 16 studio albums that showcased his distinctive genre-blending sound. These albums featured everything from heartfelt ballads to upbeat tunes, capturing a wide range of emotions and stories. Songs like Red-Headed Stranger and Phases and Stages highlighted his ability to connect with listeners on a deeper level. Willie's success came from more than just talent. It was his willingness to innovate and adapt. By embracing change and collaborating with new influences, he crafted a sound that was uniquely his own. Willie Nelson faced heartbreak when he divorced in 1971. This emotional turmoil inspired his new album, Phases and Stages, which beautifully captured the feelings of a breakup. The album was divided into two parts, showcasing the perspectives of both men and women. One of the hit songs, Bloody Mary Morning, resonated deeply with fans, reflecting the pain of lost love. As Willie moved forward, he signed with Columbia Records, seeking more creative freedom and opportunities. His first album with Columbia was a huge success, marking a turning point in his career. During this time, Willie partnered with fellow musician Waylon Jennings, and together they helped invent a new school genre and called it the outlaw country genre. Their collaboration combined traditional country with a rebellious spirit, breaking away from the polished sounds of the mainstream, outlaw country. Outlaw country is a genre that blends traditional country music with rock, folk, and even blues. It emerged in the 1970s 
As artists sought to break free from the polished sound of mainstream Nashville, Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings were key figures in this movement, redefining what country music could be. They embraced a raw, authentic sound that resonated with fans who craved honesty in their music. Their collaboration brought a rebellious spirit to the genre, paving the way for new school artists. The beatnik movement of the 1950s and 60s influenced this shift in music. It celebrated non-conformity and artistic freedom, with musicians like Bob Dylan and Jack Kerouac leading the way. These icons inspired Willie and Waylon to push boundaries and explore new themes in their songs. Willie's innovative songwriting and Waylon's powerful vocals created a fresh sound that changed the music landscape. Together, they rejected the constraints of traditional country and opened doors for a new generation of artists. Their impact continues to be felt today, as outlaw country remains a vital part of the music world. He was an Oxford scholar, a Golden Gloves boxer, and an army ranger who flew helicopters. But we knew him most as an accomplished singer, songwriter, and actor. Entertainment guru George Pinocchio has more on this truly unique performer. Chris Christofferson. Chris Christofferson was a true renaissance man, excelling in every phase of the entertainment world. His ability to try new things led him from the army to the music industry, where he chased his dreams. After his son was born with a defective esophagus, Chris took on odd jobs to make ends meet. He worked as a janitor, a construction worker, and even flew helicopters in the oil fields. In his early days, Chris handed demo tapes to Johnny Cash, who famously tossed them aside. Undeterred, Chris wrote iconic songs like Help Me Make It Through the Night and Me and Bobby McGee, capturing the heart of his experiences. An urban legend tells how Chris once landed a helicopter in front of Johnny's house, beer in hand, insisting he listen to his music. This bold move paid off as Johnny was inspired by Chris's song, Sunday Morning Coming Down. Impressed by the raw emotion and storytelling, Johnny took Chris under his wing. The two would go on to create timeless music that resonated with generations. In 1971, Chris Christofferson won the Grammy for Best Song of the Year with Me and Bobby McGee. His powerful vocals often carried a political message, making him a voice for the people. Chris didn't shy away from expressing his views on current events, passionately critiquing U.S. military operations during the Gulf and Iraq wars. He openly challenged the invasion of Panama and addressed everything he saw as wrong. His debut album featured war songs that highlighted the struggles of soldiers and civilians alike. Chris's famous statements against war resonated deeply, showcasing his commitment to peace and justice. Through his lyrics, he aimed to shine a light on the harsh realities of conflict, giving a voice to those who suffered. Chris also dedicated time to supporting farm workers and their rights. He participated in charity events throughout the 1980s, working alongside famous names like Joan Baez and John Denver. These events aimed to raise awareness and funds for workers facing injustice. One of his poignant songs, Justice for Mumia, honored Mumia Abu-Jamal, a journalist and activist facing death row. The song called for justice and highlighted the importance of fighting for the oppressed. Chris Christofferson's music continues to inspire and provoke thought, reminding us of the power of song as a tool for social change. His unwavering stance on political issues solidified his legacy as an artist who truly cared about the world around him, the highwaymen. If you want to enter an already established industry, then try holding an impactful name that instantly drives attention to you. They did the same. Chris, along with his mates, made a group and name it The Highwaymen. It was a legendary supergroup in country music, formed by four iconic artists, Willie Nelson, Johnny Cash, Waylon Jennings, and Chris Christofferson. Their motive was simple, to create music that pushed boundaries and celebrated the rebel spirit of the country. They recorded three successful albums under Columbia Records, with their first album produced by the legendary Barry Beckett. The Highwaymen's unique sound combined elements of country, rock, and folk, which raised concerns among country genre purists who worried about their non-traditional style. Despite this, their music resonated with fans, making them a force in the industry. The group often joked about their rebellious image and shared a bond that went beyond music. They aimed to tour together after releasing four albums, bringing their powerful performances to audiences around the world. 
However, tragedy struck just before this tour. Johnny Cash faced health issues, and Waylon Jennings dealt with personal struggles, casting a shadow over their plans. Their individual solo performances were highly celebrated, but the magic of the Highwaymen was unmatched. The group enjoyed a successful run, producing hits like Highwayman and Desperados Waiting for a Train. Sadly, as time went on, Johnny Cash and Waylon Jennings passed away, leaving a significant void in the country music world. Christofferson had different ideas and headed to Nashville. There, he was a janitor at a recording studio and flew helicopters on the side. The demise of Johnny Cash in 2003 and Waylon Jennings in 2002 marked the end of an era for the Highwaymen. Although they dissolved as a group, their music continues to inspire and influence artists today. Chris and Willie collaborated multiple times together, but unfortunately, they didn't get as much appreciation as the Highwaymen received. Once Chris reunited with Willie after a long time passing, Johnny Cash's year was 2003, and they decided to perform one of Cash's songs, Big River, which he already recorded with his fellow members of the Highwaymen. But unfortunately, the organizers harshly refused them to recognize them as band members of the Highwaymen. It was a shock to both Chris and Willie, and when Chris tries to recall the old days when they collectively performed brilliantly under the label of the Highwaymen, the organizers reply even more harshly. They apologize in a mocking way that the old days are past now, even though they were golden, and they will remember them always, but they must move on and forget the already dissolved group. They called Chris and Willie an ashtray of leftover ashes, which they must clean. This literally broke Chris's heart. Chris Christofferson, the final act, and Willie's revelations. The world faced a great loss with the death of Chris Christofferson. Aside from his musical genius, he delivered a memorable performance in Blade II, playing the charming character Whistler. This role showcased his ability to blend charisma with depth, adding a unique flavor to the film. Chris experienced significant changes in his personal life as well. He was married three times and had five children, his marriages spanned decades, with his most notable union to Rita Coolidge from 1973 to 1980. Despite the challenges, he remained a loving father and friend. Chris had an incredible personality, full of warmth and humor. He was known for his down-to-earth nature and profound wisdom, connecting deeply with those around him. In his final wishes, he asked for a simple epitaph on his tombstone, seeking to capture the essence of his life. He requested the first three lines from Leonard Cohen's Bird on the Wire. The lines read, Like a bird on the wire, like a drunk in midnight choir, I have tried to be free. These lines demonstrate that life is not a desired destiny, and it freed its prisoner at the end by touching the cold hands of death. Chris lived his life on his own terms, embracing every opportunity and challenge. He followed his passions leaving behind a legacy of unforgettable music and heartfelt performances that continue to inspire. His spirit and creativity will always be remembered. During a quiz with his longtime friend Willie Nelson, he was asked about his evergreen songs that produced powerful influence on the music industry. He also asked that what forced him to change his writing style too quickly, but gracefully from a country music genre to a totally different style which is somehow considered to be a part of hip-hop or rap music. He responded with a smile and revealed about the difficulty that comes with creativity for all artists. Artists are forced by their inner feelings to do what their soul wants them to do. Willie Nelson revealed that Chris Christofferson was one of the best songwriters of his time. Chris was never shy about speaking out against injustice and fighting for human rights. He lived boldly, setting an example for others throughout his life. With each song, he shed light on important issues, using his platform to advocate for those in need. Whether addressing war, poverty, or inequality, Chris's music resonated deeply with listeners, encouraging them to think critically about the world around them. His passion for social justice inspired many to stand up and speak out, reminding us that art can be a powerful tool for change. Chris Christofferson's courage and commitment to his beliefs made him not just a musical icon, but a true hero for humanity. As we celebrate his life and legacy, let us remember his unwavering spirit and dedication to making the world a better place. 
Chris will forever be cherished for his remarkable contributions to music and his fearless advocacy for justice. 34 years of marriage, what is the secret? What is the secret? <laughs> um, but what is it? What has kept y'all so strong and happy all these years? She's a remarkable woman. I mean, you just listen to each other, you're there for each other, you, you, you know, it's really just staying fluid with whatever's going on in your life and moving. You are at the right place at the right time. Because just a few days ago, the wife of infamous celebrity Michelle Fox spilled some beans about their magical love story, despite the fact that they have been together for almost 35 long years. We always see her acting as a right hand for Michael Fox in every condition. Her shocking revelation about their iconic relationship. When we kind of reconnected and um, it's great. You know, I love working with Michael and um, we're very simpatico. Has shook the entire world as they are considered to be the best couple in town when everyone around them changes their partners like clothes. Let's get closer. This charming persona jumps into this world on the 6th of June, 1961 as a brother to four of his siblings. His father was a military officer, and they were supposed to move from one place to another because of his job requirements, continue shifting and changing environmental effects. Michael and his brain react to it differently. How? Soon you will realize. Young Michael faces new challenges every time his father, William Fox, transfers to another city in Canada. But on the other hand, this gave Michael a totally new world to explore every time. Before it gets worse and could destroy the personality of young Michael, his father retires in 1971, and the little brat, who was always considered to be the future military man, suddenly takes a decision in his life. He decided to chase his dream. He dreamt to become a rock star and get fame in the music industry so he grabbed a guitar on a Christmas night and started playing with it. I love guitars. I'm Gibson and Fender. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it was also, like, I think if I looked at that now, I might say, a little twee, like, easy on the jumping and the trampolines with the guitar. He was just eight years old when he himself tried hard to learn about music. He often joined some smaller bands for their performances, but this was not his destiny something bigger was chasing him. When he joined secondary school, his interest started to swipe towards something new. He didn't want to be a person who all day long worked for some other company to make them millionaires. His creative nature was urging him to do something extraordinary. And one day, he got to know about drama classes in his school. He became surprised to know that acting role plays was not just a time pass for him. He had inner feelings for acting. It was just the beginning. As soon as he realized his real ambition, he didn't stop. And at the young age of 15, he entered the world of stardom with his first debut Canadian television series, Leo and Me. Leo and Me. I added it up on the way home, Leo. I've been in seven jams. A little shorter and the hair a little longer, but even then he was getting roles because he looked younger than his age. Here is a point. Michael was young, and it was his first experience to face the limelight of the media industry. But he was confident enough to do the role. He proved himself an alpha male who didn't stop. He successfully does the character and decides to take the acting career professionally. This takes courage, and he decided to leave the limited Canadian platform for a huge, never-ending sky of opportunities in Hollywood. He stepped into Los Angeles in 1979, when he was just 18. But that wasn't a piece of cake. He struggled a lot to get a chance in Hollywood. He spent most of his time regretting his decision to come to Los Angeles, but he stayed committed to his passion, and soon it paid off. During his countless auditions, producer Ronaldo Sheldon met with him. He liked his acting skills. It seemed like now he was going to debut in Hollywood, 
like a storm, and Ronald confirmed his name for an American film letter from Frank. But once again, another challenge rose up. He was not able to do the film with his name, Michael Fox, because there was another Michael Fox in Hollywood who was an experienced and known actor. And according to the laws of the Actors Guild in Hollywood, no two actors can be registered with the same name. Now Michael has to take another bold decision. He slightly changed his name and induced a J in the middle of his name. He laughs at this name. There was a, there was a Michael Fox in the union when I, when I moved down. So they said you have to be something else. So, you know, I didn't like, you know, Bob Fox. So I, uh, so I, I made up the J because there was an actor named Michael J. Polly that I liked, so. I said, Michael J, that sounds good. And when people ask about why he uses the letter J specifically, he gives the epic response that he assumed himself to be a genuine. Michael started his career in Hollywood. He did multiple films and television shows like Midnight Madness and Class of 1984, but he didn't get any fame. He was waiting for his big break. Some people started considering him a bad choice for their movies, but at that weak point, he got a role that changed his life forever. The iconic character of Alex P. Keaton in the NBC sitcom film Family Ties. He played this role of a conservative teen against his liberal parents in such a great way that the show became the premium show of American television in 1982 not only for a year, but continuously stealing the screen for many years and reaching for seven seasons. Michael did that role so perfectly that he got three primetime Emmy Awards for this comedy series. This is Michael J. Fox's fourth consecutive nomination. First Emmy win for his work on Spin City. He has won three previous Emmys for his work on Family Time. He received worldwide recognition for his name and skills. He got fame that everyone dreams of. Now Michael was all set to lead the films too, and in 1985, he got the iconic role of Marty in Back to the Future, and his energetic persona made this fantasy film based on time travel a super hit. His relatable punchlines and outstanding chemistry with Christopher Lloyd created unforgettable moments. He made this film a beloved classic for all ages. The movie earned $380 million worldwide, and it was a huge success. So the super hit movie continues to its sequel, Back to the Future Part Two and Back to the Future Part Three. All the movies were big hits for Michael, and he proved himself as a versatile actor. Now, Michael J. Fox was getting fame for his comedic roles, but he decided to get out of his comfort zone and do something challenging. So he did the role of Jamie Conway in Bright Lights, Big City, which was a role of a person fighting with self-demons in the limelight of New York. With this role, he once again proved his versatility, and then he didn't look back. He gave one after another hits, like he did intense war films, political scripts, and intense stories very well. With all this, he continued to win hearts with his humorous acting skills in movies like Doc Hollywood. After achieving remarkable success in films, he rejoins the TV screen for one more time. This time, he gave another hit sitcom Spin City based on a character named Mike Flaherty. The show cleverly combined political satire with humor showcasing Fox's talent for delivering sharp, comedic lines. His charismatic performance and relatable character helped revitalize his career after the success of Family Ties and the Back to the Future films. With its ensemble cast and engaging storylines, Spin City quickly gained a dedicated following. Fox's portrayal of Flaherty earned him critical acclaim including several Emmy nominations. The Emmy goes to, oh wow, this is even more nerve-wracking than anything else. Okay, Michael J. Fox, Spin City. Ultimately, the series solidified his status as a television icon. 
and showcased his enduring appeal in the world of comedy. If we talk about his award shelf, his character Alex in Family Ties Alone won three Emmy Awards. Fox also got the Golden Globe Award for his outstanding performance in Spin City, along with multiple nominations. His charming personality always attracts his fans to watch his shows, giving him a burst of fame throughout his career. This was the story of Michael's workplace, but something strange has happened inside his private life, his shocking love story, which is now raising questions among his fans. The love story that occupied the hearts of millions for decades. Michael J. Fox and Tracy Pollan were co-stars at the sets of Family Ties, where the chemistry and bonding between these two mesmerized the whole world. Michael chose Tracy himself for her brilliant role of Alex Love in season four. Well, she was she was hired to play um, Alex's girlfriend, uh, and she was a really interesting girl, woman. She was um. Michael admitted once that when he looked at Tracy during auditions, he decided to give the role to her. She had the courage to do the iconic role. Tracy inspired Michael, and this was the beginning of their future relationship. Although both stars were engaged with other partners at that time, both were dating other people. But despite sharing some friendly moments together on the sets of family ties, they didn't have any other feelings for each other. They were smoothly heading towards their future, where a surprise union was waiting for them. Tracy was not like other young girls. She was quiet and thoughtful. She often sits on her chair for long times, thinking and observing others. Michael found it amazing that a girl could be so quiet. He was curious to know about her thoughts, but things remained the same at that time. Soon, in 1987, Tracy and Michael reunite at the sets of Bright Light Big City, which was a hit given by Michael and was based on Jay McInerney's novel. They both were now more mature and more experienced in their relationships. Both were separated from their previous affairs. This time when they met each other, it was something unforgettable for them. They started dating off screen. Time passes quickly as Michael and Tracy become special for each other. They both struggled in their career, which made them closer to each other. They secretly build their romance while away from the spotlight. They shared joyful moments together, but the people were looking for their office announcement for being in a relationship. They wanted their favorite celebrities to take a decision for them, and Michael didn't disappoint them. Soon in 1987, during the red carpet of Emmy Awards, Michael and Tracy showed their appearance. Michael received another Emmy Award for his iconic character of Alex in Family Ties. And this time, Tracy was standing beside him as a symbol of support and courage. She was looking at him with a meaningful smile, which was allowing people to understand the depth of their strong bond. As Michael walked down, he grabbed the hand of Tracy and this proved they were together. Michael was not just a temporary partner. He proposed to Tracy in 1987 for marriage. Tracy happily agreed. Her smile proved her unconditional love for Michael. Once in the interview, Michael revealed that he was 100% sure about the positive response from Tracy. The only thing depressing about their marriage was the place and time for marriage. They kept it a secret. Both didn't want people to invade their privacy, so in a very close gathering, they shared their wedding vows with each other. Just after the seven months of their relationships became public, on July the 16th, they tied the knot in the West Mountain Inn in Arlington, Vermont. The year was 1988, and Michael was 27 years old, holding the hand of his wife, who was 28 years old. As they took the vows, they started a splendid journey of joy and love together. After Michael J. Fox and Tracy Pollan married in 1988, they welcomed their first child, Sam, 
In 1989, their family grew with the arrival of twins, Aquina and Skylar, in 1995. The youngest daughter of them, Esme, was born in 2001, completing their family. Each child brought unique joy and energy into their lives, shaping their journey as a couple. Michael often spoke about the profound happiness his children brought him, providing strength during challenging times. Together, they navigated the complexities of life, creating a loving home filled with laughter and resilience. Their bond deepened with each milestone, showcasing the power of love and family amidst life's uncertainties. They were raising their family happily. Michael J. Fox and Tracy Pollan prioritized family time, often engaging in outdoor activities and shared adventures. They fostered open communication, encouraging their children to express themselves freely. With love and laughter as their foundation, they instilled values of empathy and resilience, ensuring their kids grew up grounded and confident. But this was not a fairy tale after all. Michael was unaware that something in the near future was going to destroy his whole career and life too. One day during his shooting of Doc Hollywood, he felt a little twitch in his pinky finger. He considered it an exhaustion symptom and ignored it. But soon, he realized that something suspicious was happening inside his body. Upon examination, he became shocked to know that he was diagnosed with the degenerative neurological disorder, specifically known as Parkinson's disease. Michael couldn't bear the news. He was shocked as the doctor informed him, you are losing your part of the brain that is responsible for producing dopamine. I really feel it, and it's genuine, but it's hard fought. And it's hard, it's hard one, I should say. This fear, we can find ways to just give ourselves a break. At that time, he was at the peak of his career. Life was a win-win situation for him. Fear gripped him, threatening to shatter his dreams and public image. Desperate to maintain his vibrant persona, he hid his struggles, forcing a smile even as his body betrayed him. The weight of his secret grew heavier, leading him to seek refuge in alcohol. As he tried to navigate the demands of fame and family, the strain took a toll on his marriage with Tracy. Moments of joy were overshadowed by anxiety and frustration, leaving him feeling isolated. He felt like a performer in a role he could no longer sustain battling a relentless tide of despair. Despite his efforts to appear strong, the cracks began to show, and his internal turmoil seeped into their relationship. Tracy, ever supportive, sensed his pain, but the distance between them widened as he withdrew further into his struggles. Each day became a battle to reconcile his public life with the chaos inside, and he knew he couldn't keep this up forever. Tracy was always there for him. But when she saw Michael get addicted to alcohol and denied taking medical help, she showed her anger towards him. This time, Michael realizes that hiding from reality may not change the truth. He must have faced them. Michael J. Fox reached a turning point when he could no longer hide his Parkinson's disease. Tired of the secrecy and the toll it took on his life, he decided to accept his diagnosis. With courage, he quit alcohol, realizing it only deepened his struggles. Determined to confront his reality, he stepped into the spotlight for an interview to share his journey with fans. No longer willing to let the paparazzi dictate his narrative, he openly discussed living with Parkinson's, aiming to inspire others facing similar challenges. He began taking medication to manage his symptoms, finding a new sense of hope in the process. With support from Tracy and his loved ones, he learned that vulnerability could be a strength. Each day became a step towards reclaiming his life, embracing both the struggles and the triumphs. Michael's honesty resonated deeply, 
forging a stronger connection with his fans. By sharing his story, he transformed his pain into a platform for awareness, helping others understand the reality of living with a chronic illness. His journey became a testament to resilience and the power of acceptance. In 2000, he founded an organization to help research about Parkinson disease, named the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson Research. So Michael J. began his medical treatment with a hopeful spirit, ready to tackle the challenges of Parkinson's disease. From the start, he focused on what he could do to improve his health. With his wife, Tracy, by his side for over three decades, he found strength in her unwavering support. When doctors discovered a non-cancerous tumor on his spine, it felt like another setback. The surgery to remove the tumor left him fragile and in pain. Recovery was difficult, and there were days when he felt overwhelmed. However, Michael refused to let despair take over. He held on to his optimistic approach, believing that he could overcome these obstacles. Tracy's encouragement was crucial during this time. She stood by him through every challenge, reminding him of his strength and resilience. Their family rallied together, filling their home with love and laughter, which made the tough days more bearable. With each passing day, Michael focused on healing and regaining his strength. But his struggles didn't end there. He faced a severe accident soon, in which he broke many of his bones. This accident caused him another hazard to his health. He started to write during this intense period. He wrote that he survived a critical medical condition with the help of Tracy. He called her a blessing. Tracy was also deeply affected by Michael's health. She opened up in an interview about her marriage. She revealed the tough time she had with Michelle while fighting with problems in life. Answering a question, Tracy said that whenever Michael showed unkind behavior, she realized that he was probably going through hard times because the amount of love and affection she received from Michael Fox was splendid. They respect each other's decisions and private space. They have shared this strong bond with each other for almost three decades, and still both are willing to be a sample of joy for their spouses. This is true love. Recently, Tracy and Michael appeared at the National Board of Review Gala in Manhattan, where a documentary about their story grabbed the Best Documentary Award. Their life story is an example for those who are struggling in their life and consider their spouses for the problems coming in. They are still fighting Parkinson, but they are all set to explore the unending adventures of life together. Comment down below with your thoughts about Tracy and Michael Fox. And subscribe if you like these kinds of videos. See you next time.